feast your eyes. In front of me, you see four beefy coolers, and these are Kong coolers. Kong coolers are sort of like Yeti coolers, only better, because they have some really unique features. You can equip each Kong cooler with these dividers, and the dividers are made from food grade cutting board material. And not only do they double up as dividers, but you can actually take these puppies and affix them to the outside of the cooler with what Kong calls the Kong kicker. It's essentially a metal kickstand. And now you have a cutting board, a countertop space. And then you can close the lid, keep your drinks and your food cold, while at the same time being able to food prep. I'm not gonna dive too far into the specs of these coolers in this video because I already did this previously and that video is already on YouTube. So if you're curious what makes this cooler different from the competition, go and watch that video and I'll link to it in the description below. Now in today's video, I'm gonna conduct an ice test. I'm gonna fill all these coolers with a bunch of ice and then hang out for a few days, three, four, five days and see how long they keep ice cold because I think when you purchase a cooler that, that's that nice, that expensive, you wanna make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to, right? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this video to hopefully help you make up your mind if this cooler is right for you. If not, you could keep moving along. I believe this is every size they make. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. So this right here is the smallest model. This is the 25 quart. Next to it, you have 50 quart, which is literally double. Then you have the 70 quart. And last but not least, you have this huge beast of a cooler. This is the 110 quart model, and it's so big you can literally take a bath in it. Just as a reference point, I'm also gonna fill this cooler with ice. This is the Igloo Ice Cube. It's a cooler I bought a few years back. I don't quite remember how much it cost, maybe 50, 75 bucks. And this was my cooler before I went Kong. I like this cooler. I like the shape, I like the size. For how small it is, you can really cram a bunch into it. The only trouble is, it's not very good at actually doing its job. The walls are very thin, and so ice melts relatively quickly in this cooler. So. I'm gonna use this cooler as my baseline. I'm gonna fill it with ice as, as well as with the Kong coolers. And then we're gonna do like a little comparison of those coolers versus this cooler. And real quickly, the last thing I wanna say is, again, look at these walls, probably half an inch, a quarter inch, versus these Kong walls. I mean, that's three inches, four inches in places. So that means that these coolers have way more insulation. <laughs> that actually means that they have insulation because I don't really imagine that that's, that that really qualifies as insulation. Okay, so enough rambling. Let's go get some ice and hop to it. Look at all this ice. This is 12 40 pound bags of party ice, which I guess just means party size. This lid keeps falling off. This is one of the things I did not like about this cooler. Is that the lid is kind of a piece of crap. These coolers are now full of ice. Each one is full to the brim. And I'm gonna come out here once or twice every single day. I'm gonna flip over the lids and look inside the coolers to assess how well they're insulating how cold they're keeping the ice, whether or not it's melting. And I'm gonna pit all four of the Kong coolers against my old Igloo cooler. This right here is gonna be our baseline.
It's been exactly 12 hours since I've put the ice in the coolers and as you can see there's still lots of ice left. In fact, it's nearly impossible to tell how much of it is melted. So I'm guessing, oh, this one's definitely melted more than the rest. I'm guessing for the bulk of the coolers, I'm gonna have to wait longer to see what's actually taking place. So at this point, I'm gonna seal the coolers back up and come back in the morning to check on them again. It's been 24 hours. Let's see what happened. A day into this experiment, and we're already seeing some stark differences. Let's check it out. This again is our igloo cooler. This is the baseline. And after just a day of sitting in the sun, you can already see how much the ice has melted. There's big crevasses on each corner of the cooler. And as a whole, the ice has shrank four or five inches. So when I filled it up, if you recall, it was almost full to the brim. And now it's melted quite a bit. Next we have the 25 quart Kong cooler. And you're definitely starting to see that the ice is diminishing, but not nearly as much as the previous one. This is maybe like two inches, one and a half, two inches. The 50 quart looks to be about the same. No holes in the corners. That means that it's keeping things cold proportionately throughout this entire cooler. That's a good sign. The 70 quart, same story. It probably looks a little bit better than that one. So the interesting thing is that all the ice has melted together and it's formed big blocks of ice in between the partition, the divider. So I can't really dig through this ice too easily because it's rock solid. And this behemoth cooler seems like it's doing the best. It doesn't even appear really like the ice has even melted in this thing. So, so far it appears that the bigger the cooler, the better it's holding up. The 110 quart is winning, then the 70, the 50, the 25, and last but not least, the igloo, which is definitely melting the fastest. All right, let's keep going. The ice is melting very, very slowly. Look at that, that's the big cooler, smaller cooler, even smaller. I mean, look at that. That's about the same amount of ice that was in there the last time I checked it. I'm impressed. These con coolers are going strong. Now when you get to the igloo, things look drastically different. The ice is diminishing very, very quickly. You can see the crevasses getting deeper. The ice is dropping and now you can see water down below. So it's official. We can already tell that this cooler isn't as good at insulating as all the other coolers. Very interesting. Okay, on we go. What can I tell you that's not already self-evident? Ice is melting. That's pretty much halfway gone already. And as we move up the line, we see the Kong coolers are starting to melt a little bit too, though not nearly as bad. The 50 quart, 
the 50, 70, and 110 quart almost look unfazed. I mean, look at that. That right there looks like the same amount of ice that I put into it about two days ago. <sighs> Still melting. I'm starting to think that these ice blocks will never melt. This is the 110 quart cooler. As you can see, the ice is diminishing very, very slowly. I might be here for 10, 15 days at this rate. I mean, look at that. That's probably down about four inches. As we move down the line, it becomes evident that the same is true for the other con coolers. The ice blocks are still very much intact. I am starting to see more of a crevasse developing along the edges, along the walls of the cooler. So that's kind of a new development. But overall, it looks very good. There's very little water at the bottom of the cooler. And it appears as though this is still very much doing its job. The 50 quart cooler, same basic story. Let's get that out of the way. See, look, there's still complete blocks of ice, and there's a little bit of water in the bottom, maybe two or three inches. Well, I can crush up one block. Maybe I can crush up two blocks. As you can see though, that is still a very healthy portion of ice in the cooler. Now the 25 quart is definitely shrinking faster than the rest. You can kind of see that that looks like about maybe four inches of ice has already melted. and I'm able to chop the blocks of ice in half or in little bits and pieces. But again, there's still a fair amount of ice in this cooler. If you were refrigerating beers or smoothies or food, this would still very much be doing its job. Look at this thing. So maybe two thirds. Whew. Two thirds of the ice has already melted in this cooler. So it's very evident at this point that the other coolers are doing a much better job at insulating. This ice is melting way faster than in the other coolers. Now for the sake of this experiment, I'm not dumping any water out because I wanna see the entire process. But if you were actually storing food in this cooler, you'd wanna get rid of the water so as not to ruin your food. And I imagine this would actually make the ice melt a little quicker. So by not dumping the water out, I'm actually maybe preserving it a little bit longer in the igloo. Melted. Look at that. It's basically melted. I mean, that's pathetic. It's a little thin crust of ice. It's basically done. It's basically cold water. Better. Even better. Better still. Best. At this rate, I'm gonna be here for 12 days. I know it. Which I don't really have time for. To be honest, I want this ice to melt faster because I got shit to do.
here we go again we're about five days in and as you can see some of the coolers are still going strong look at this thing definitely a little bit more space on the sides but still two huge blocks of ice and as we move down the line you can see that it's basically the same story we're now starting to see a little bit of water on the sides but that can easily be drained at which point this cooler would still be doing its job the 50 quart is one of the coolers where I crushed up the ice but you can see there's still a healthy dose of ice left in this cooler and the 25 quart has definitely seen the most melting out of the con coolers but I would still say that you can keep your food cold with that amount of ice then when you get to the igloo that's all the ice that's left that little chunk right there Whew. look at how cute that is you see that so cute it's been two hours since I typically come and check on the ice I've been doing 10 in the morning and 10 at night every single day and I decided to come out at 12 because I was kind of thinking this ice would be gone today and I'm so glad that I did because as you can see for yourself that's all that's left so at this point the igloo cooler is disqualified and the other coolers continue on So the Kongs are the only ones left in the lineup. And this is my nightly check. It's 10 p.m. And as you can see, all of the coolers still have ice in them. All of the Kong coolers, that is. This one might be out of commission tomorrow, but as of right now, there's still ice in it. Some people are definitely gonna comment on the fact that this video is so long. It's probably too long for an ice test. But then again, maybe some will appreciate the detail, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going for it. At this point, my curiosity is spiked. I definitely wanna see this thing through till the end because I'm curious, how long do coolers hold ice? And when you gotta know, you gotta know, you know? The little cooler still has a little bit left in it. Then as we move down the line, we see that the ice is definitely starting to melt, but we're not out of the running yet. Look at that. The 70 quart still has ice blocks in it. Damn, that's cold. And this cooler, I just don't know what to say about this cooler. Look at this thing. I might be here for a month. We're starting to see some water on the edges. That's nice. This cooler probably explains why glaciers don't melt. I'm out here a little bit early this evening. It's about 9.30. I'm getting kind of tired, and so I thought I'd 
come out and finish my ritual a little bit ahead of schedule. That one's getting close. It's slim pickings in there. This next one's melting too. And then we got the big boys. And the big boys are holding steady. I might actually miss this practice. It's become habitual at this point. Checking my coolers. Checking them in the eve and then again in the morning. This is how memories get made. So I'm finally able to crush up the ice blocks. But as you can see, there's still heaps of ice in this big cooler. The 70 quart. And the 70 quart definitely has more water in it. This one is melting faster than that one. So the 50 quart is definitely melting quicker than the other two. There is much less ice in it and the water is significantly warmer. It's noticeably warmer on my hands. So it's melting slightly faster than the 70 quart and the 110. Now the 25 quart, I've been saying for a couple days now, I think it's going to be done. I think it's going to be done, but it's still going strong. I really do think that by the end of today, all of this ice will have melted. There's probably four or five handfuls of ice still remaining. You can see how much the ice has receded. Um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. I think by the end of today, this thing will be out of commission and it'll be down to three more coolers. I checked this small Kong at 10 a.m. this morning. It had a little bit of ice left in it and it's now 6 p.m., eight hours later. And I'm gonna open it right now because I don't think that the ice in it is gonna make it till 10 p.m. So let's see how it did. Aha, I was correct. Look at this. We got less than a handful of ice left over. So I think this is a really good point in time to say that this cooler is out of the running and it's down to the three big Kongs at this point. This cooler here in front of you has made it seven and a half days. I think that's very notable. Before we say goodbye to this cooler, I wanna point out that as compared to the Igloo cooler, which can hold 60 quarts of ice, this can only hold 25. So this cooler in effect was able to hold much less ice for much longer than the Igloo. So, you know, that's a fact.
and then there were three. It's official. My neighbors think I'm nuts. I come out here every day, twice a day, and I talk to myself about coolers. Still going. The 50 quart is still going. Seventy quart, same story. One ten, same story. On we go. Still melting. <laughs> it's looking pretty thin. Let's go ahead and pull this out permanently. That'll make it easier to see. Look at that. Still cold, but that's looking like maybe by the end of today, this cooler might be done. This is the 50 quart. Moving right along. 70 quart. It's got a little bit more ice in it, though not very much. And then we have the big beast of a cooler. This is the 110. If I were to guess, I would say that this cooler has at least another day left in it. The 50 quart is donezo. The 70 quart will most likely be done tomorrow. That's all she wrote. We're 10 days in people, and the 70 quart is officially done. I wanna show you guys something real quick and I'm hoping the camera will pick it up. So this right here is road dust. This dust has accumulated on the cooler for 10 days. This is not movie magic. I can't replicate this in post-production. This is authentic 10 day old dust. Whoo, that is cold. There's still some ice left in the 110. How long will it last? I'm so curious. I think I might be right on the money with 12 days. On we go.
Look at that. The ice is melted. This cooler is done. At this point, I'm gonna dump the water out of the cooler and finish things up. And then we should summarize everything probably and make sense of everything that we learned. One last walkthrough. Here's all the coolers again. By now you should be really familiar with everything. You probably know more about Kong coolers than Kong coolers knows. This video has been long enough, hey? Let's do a quick recap, shall we? So in order to get the most accurate, best results possible, I put all of the coolers that I tested in the hottest, sunniest spot on my property. During the experiment, outside temperatures ranged from 71 degrees Fahrenheit up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, with an average temperature of about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The ice retention test produced the following results. The 60-quart igloo lasted 98 hours, or 4.08 days. The 25-quart Kong lasted 152 hours, or 6.33 days. The 50-quart Kong lasted 204 hours, or 8.5 days. The 70-quart lasted 216 hours, or 9 days. And the 110-quart Kong lasted a whopping 240 hours, or 10 days. 10 full days, that's crazy! That's enough time to pack your cooler full of ice and food, drive to the east coast from the west coast, come back and still have some ice to spare. It's insane. This experiment has taught me a few different things. Number one, insulation makes a huge difference when it comes to coolers. Number two, when you have plenty of insulation, i.e. the walls of your cooler are thick, then ice volume becomes a factor in cold retention, meaning that the more ice that you pack into a cooler with thick walls, the longer the cold will last. And so we saw this as we went up in size from the 25 quart Kong up into the 110. The walls of the coolers were the exact same size, but the more ice we packed in there, the longer it lasted. And this has practical applications, such as, you know, if you're a person that tends to take extended road trips, go for two weeks at a time, then you're probably better suited with the bigger cooler because you're gonna keep cold longer. On the other hand, if you're somebody that's like a weekend warrior, you never leave for more than a few days at a time, then you could probably make do with a smaller Kong, like the 25 quart or the 50 quart, and that should meet your needs pretty well. Third and finally, I learned that though the 60 quart igloo cooler, which was our baseline cooler, was closer to the 50 quart Kong in size, it melted ice two days quicker than the 25 quart Kong. This for me has further affirmed the fact that good insulation is very important when it comes to coolers. And the million dollar question is, are Kong coolers worth the extra money? I'm curious to know what you think, so make sure to leave me a comment below. Personally, I think yes, absolutely. I think these coolers are worth it because you do spend more, but you get much more bang for your buck. And I'm a firm believer that it makes sense to buy one nice thing once than a bunch of crappy things a few times. You know, there's a couple good sayings about this. Buy nice or buy twice is one of my favorite ones. And then the other one is I'm too cheap to buy cheap things. Because in the end, if you go cheap and you skimp out, you end up purchasing, repurchasing, and maybe even repurchasing again and that's wasteful, it's not good for the environment, and ultimately that's a pain in the butt. And that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching. For more videos that are just like this, but totally different, subscribe to my channel, Mutenko Films.